Yeah. What's going on, good people? Hip hop heads, friends. It's good to have you here. My name is MC Till, one of the hosts of the Boom Bap Chat of everybody's hip hop label. So good to have you here tonight. If you are in Cincinnati, as always, please get on over to Pleasant Ridge. Check out everybody's records. They have a great assortment of vinyl, CDs, tapes, books. They got everything. And if you can't get over there, they're online at everybodysrecords.com. And if you still can't find what you're looking for, there's another group that uh, I've been plugging a lot lately. I love what they're doing. They're called Get On Down. Uh, you can find them at getondown.com. And it, especially if you're into hip hop and vinyl, they're doing all these re-releases and anniversary sets, deluxe sets. They do have tapes and CDs as well, but they're really big on vinyl. Uh, so if that's your thing, uh, support them. You can get your vinyl there, getondown.com. So check that out. Yo, tonight is the Boom Bap Chat number 68. We got a friend of the show here with us. I will introduce him just after I say what's up and hello to Profound. Profound, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, brother Till. What's happening, bro? Hey, man, living well, man, living well. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, man. We also, as always, have Ayomas Marad in the building. What's up, Ayo? What up, brother Till? What up, pro? What's, what's good, what's, Ayo? What's the deal? Yeah, it's good to be here with you guys. Our guest tonight uh, has been a friend of the show for a long time, and um, he does these reviews on YouTube. He's, he's super into hip hop music. He really knows his stuff. He knows the, the sound of the music. He knows the lyrics. He processes the music, analyzes the music. He knows this music uh, better than probably anybody I know knows this music and we are just honored to have him and all of this wealth of knowledge join us tonight if you all could make a big round of applause do something kick somebody in the face do something exciting for my man Yafeth from ygt records welcome to the show man appreciate y'all man thanks for that amazing intro what's, what's yeah. going on guys i am moss profound what's going on till appreciate y'all i'm glad to be here yeah, it should man. be a fun one man it should Technical definitely be a fun one, man. I, I really appreciate the YouTube videos that you do. Uh, they're, they're super you, dope. Man. Yeah, man, they're super informative, and you just keep banging them out. Do you remember the very first one or one of the first ones you did and why you did that one? Yeah, uh, the very first video I did, and I really hate talking about my old videos because I think they're all horrible, honestly. But the, the very first video I did, I was just showing off some records I bought. And uh, the thing is, one of my friends had to really kind of convince me to start the channel. I never wanted to do it, uh, but, but he thought that, you know, collecting records was pretty cool because there wasn't many, you know, people my age uh, at the time really collecting records, you know, they didn't really care about it much. So I just decided, OK, I'll go ahead and try it out. So I just could, like grabbed my phone, hit record, just started talking about music. That's it. Yo, that's dope. That's dope. So what did he have to put? Did your friend have to push you to do it? Was there reluctant? You were reluctant a little bit? Yeah, he 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 was talking to me about doing it for several months. I kept saying, "Nah, man, like no one, no, like nobody cares, <laughs> like like nobody really wants to watch this." But but you know, after a while, I was like, "All right, I'll just go ahead and, and uh, give it a shot." And you know, the growth is it, it's it's slow, but it showed me that there is people that that do care. And then you know, obviously, I got a chance to meet guys like you. You know what I'm saying? So uh, even though back then I didn't want to do it, I really am glad I did. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did too, man. I'm glad you did too. So what got you into collecting vinyl? Uh, so uh, on, a really old friend of mine, actually, uh, I had, I, I didn't really have much interest in collecting vinyl until I actually got my hands on it. And uh, the, the biggest part of it was just, you know, the artwork, you know, I really love, you know, album, like album artwork. That's one of my favorite parts of the music outside of obviously the music. So just to have like like a really big version of it was really cool to me because I could just display it. You know what I'm saying? I, I like I really like looking at album arts. So once I kind of got deeper into that, of course, some of the records look look cool too. But the real experience of actually putting a record on a record player, putting the needle on, uh, you know, it hit me a lot different than just tapping my phone. You know, there's like a really big disconnect with a lot of things now since you know phones are amazing, but they but they take a lot of you know personal. Uh, experience away from a lot of things from taking a cat you know a picture on your phone or playing music whatever it is so that experience of buying a record you know playing it it just it was different and i actually really liked it yeah that's cool is there a, is there a vinyl album that you especially love uh not the music necessarily but just love the the look and the layout and 
you know, just the packaging of it that sticks out more than others? Um, there's a couple. Uh, I really love uh, Blue and Knots, Gods and Spirit, Titans mm. in the Flesh. I really love that that album art. It looks really, really clean. Yeah. Also, uh, Open Mike Eagles, Brick Body Kids, Still Daydreaming. Uh, he's a he's a really creative guy, and he, and yeah. he definitely shows it off in his uh, album arts. Yeah. Have you uh, had a chance to like interact with any of the artists that you review on your channel? Have they, you know, <clears throat> responded or commented or anything like that? I've I've had some just you know write you know showing love in the in the comment section. I've had some dudes like like I know uh, I believe uh, Cassius King. I believe he he, he mm. actually took a, a snippet of uh, when I reviewed for sale his uh, blues EP. He's he's actually in one of the songs, mm. and he just took like like a small sip, uh, snippet and put it on his Instagram, which was really cool. So yeah, there's been there's been people who have noticed it, and every time I see that, I'm like I'm like damn man, <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy <laughs> to see the reach, you know. You never yeah. know who's, who's like you never know who's really watching. Yeah. So when you jumped in to do it, uh, how long ago was that? Like how many a couple of years ago? Uh yeah, like about two and a half ish now. Okay, cool. So two and a half years ago, you jumped into it. The it has the reason behind why you did it back then. Is that is it different for how you for today, like why you do it today? Has it changed? Nah, it's always been the same. My yeah. my goal from day one was because uh, like I never really had a ton of people to talk about music with, especially the kind of music that I like. Yeah. Uh, and, like the only time I really had that chance was when I go to shows. Yeah. So I kind of made that channel just to kind of you know create a community of people who just like the same thing I like, and it was really that it was, it was nothing major. It was a really simple idea. So the yeah. whole goal never really changed. It's still just to you know bring a space for people to talk about stuff. That's it. Yeah. Yo, that's super dope. You. You mentioned uh, you didn't have people to talk to about this music. So I, I want to pause that. I want to come back to that. But uh, Profound, Io, uh, y'all have any questions as far as like, you know, y'all uh, YouTube channel, what he does, anything around that before we jump into a uh, conversation more about age and ageism and hip hop? Yeah, I want to get a young guy props for, uh, yeah. for just, you know, stepping out there and doing what you want to do and believing in what you believe in, man. Mm. And um, I think it's uh, definitely inspirational and motivational for anybody at any age um, to just to see that they can set themselves up, man, and do what they love to do, you know? So um, I was going to ask, are you only, do you only review music? Uh, as of right now? Yeah. Cause that's a, that's, that's a pretty big part of my life. You know, I'm always listening to music. So uh what's kind of funny is like the like the whole youtube thing that's just what i do in real life like regardless like all that's really changed is me hitting a record button you know so <laughs> so yeah you say you do that in real life yeah like like i i've never i've always had like uh reviews kind of like in my head i never like really wrote them out but i've always had thoughts on certain artists and songs and whatever it's just now uh, I'm actually making reviews. And of course, obviously I click records in real life too. And I, you know, I go to shows and all, all like all that stuff. So I pretty much just took all that and just put it on YouTube. That's it. Yeah. That's so dope that you already had like the discussions, the reviews in your head. <laughs> you just hit record and let it it's, out. That's dope. It sounds, it sounds kind of weird, but, but, but yeah, I would like have those reviews in my head. It's just, yeah. now I, I put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's super dope. Super dope. Uh, I owe any, any questions before we move, move forward? Yeah, uh, no, just same with Pro, like, um, just seeing young, you know, not to just keep focusing on his age, but you always have this idea that it's not a lot of young people that's listening to, like, Boom Bap. They probably just more so listening to the mainstream, but it's really good to see and that he created a lane, you know what I mean, to, like, you know, direct people to the music that may not get the light that it deserves you know what i mean so yeah just props to him props to you for doing that and keep doing what you're doing bro for real appreciate that man yeah no doubt so i'm curious to know about that one thing that you said about you didn't have people to talk to about this music can you expand on that like were you just living in a place where there just wasn't many people were they <laughs> listening to different music are you just introverted and didn't want to talk like what where were the people so I mean, perhaps the people were there. I just didn't know about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but no, I definitely didn't live in the middle of nowhere. You know, I was in the Bay Area, so <laughs> I was around a lot of different kind of folks. Uh, but uh, what I what I mean by that is, um, yeah, just just like you know, kind of the type of music most people were into. You know, 
Drake is is massive. A, a lot of people like Drake. Nothing wrong with him. I like him too. But you know, I don't know many folks I could talk to about Rock Marciano. You know, so uh, if I'm, you know, I might be listening to somebody like him a lot more than than a, a Drake. Um, it's just the odds of me running into somebody who, at least in my situation, uh, the odds of me running into somebody who listens to, you know, this like really niche kind of like like niche stuff was kind of rare for me, you know. And, and until of course I went I went to shows, that, then there's plenty of people there who know a ton of stuff, even way more than me. So that was my one real opportunity to kind of, you know, I guess be able to talk about this stuff with, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, that's dope. I like that you just kept going, you know. You just, you fat and like, you know, profound. I always giving you props for like, you just, you had it in you and you just found a way, you know, you found a way to get it out there. That's super dope. Super dope. So it, in this, in this world of hip hop, uh, I see these discussions happening online. I see people arguing this whole idea, like the old heads and the young heads. I'm curious to know, like, what has been your experience? Have you had older heads like come at you or have you had younger people say oh that music you listen to is trash or you know what's been your experience i've had the spectrum of just like every scenario you could probably think of like, yeah. like the dudes who like what they like and that's it yeah yeah the yeah. dudes who like what they like but they kind of diss the new stuff but for whatever mm. reason Lil uzi vert made a song they like so i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> there's then there's the dudes uh who like everything and they're just super open-minded you know what I'm saying? So I've kind of seen a lot of it all, but I've definitely heard a ton about, oh, you know, these rappers don't rap like how Meth used to do it or how Redman did it right, or, right. or whoever. Yeah. Um, and that, like, like to me, that stuff gets like a little bit annoying because there's, yeah. there's, there's, there, there's so much music out there that you'll literally never hear it all, which is kind of right. a, a, a sad thing. Cause you know, you, perhaps you never find that new artist you really like just because there's just so much out there, but um you know, there's always, there's, there, there's still a newer version of that Method Man per se, you know, you can still find that. Yeah. Uh, it's just now it's not as, as readily available to you. Everything you have to really search for. Yeah. It's kind of hidden. It's just, that's just how it is. Like, I, I even think back then, like in like the eighties and nineties where like record labels would, uh, correct me if I am wrong, but I think they'd be more willing to sign people who are different because they're like, oh, we don't have somebody like you. Right. So they would bring them on. But nowadays it's like, everybody got to do this one thing because we know this makes money. And we're mm. going to ride this out until it doesn't make money. Then move on to whatever's next. Right. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point. I mean, I feel like, you, you know, back then, you really, you really, you had gatekeepers that played a really important role. Now, I, I would say record labels, you know, jacked it up big time in, in some ways, but you really, like, you had to go through them to find your music. And you're right. I think you're right. If, if you, you couldn't just be a cookie cutter, you know, you had to have something about you. Uh, and now it's much, it seems like at least in the popular world, mainstream world, it feels like it's more uh, formulaic, you know, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you this. If there is an old head that says to you, ah, oh, I can't listen to any new music. Blah, uh, what would you reckon? Like, let's say they grew up on like De La Soul and like Common, The Roots who would you recommend them listen to from someone as you know post 90s um i would i would if they're if they're post 90s i would recommend them you already know i'm gonna say blue <laughs> blue because <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. like blue 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 is mad on point he's always yeah. been one of my favorites you know i could i could i could give someone like a blue mm -hmm. uh perhaps uh maybe even test the waters with, with the rock marciano even though he's a little bit different um uh, you know, maybe even a Freddie Gibbs, you know, he's kind of, he, he can, he can definitely get some, some, some reach, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of these R's off the top of my head, but no, you're when, good. It, you're good. when it comes to just, just, just like somebody like that, it really just, just depends on if they really want to hear it. Cause you know, I could yeah. give it to them, but if you don't want to hear it, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. you know, yeah. Nina, no, I, I want one question. I, I'd like everyone to chime in on this one. Um, do you like, you know, every, every, everything's not balanced. You know, when you have like two, two people and there's, there's a conflict, you know, it's usually not like 50% this person's fault or 50% this there's, but there's a percentage, you know, when it comes to thinking about like old heads who did not do a good job of, uh, you know, being welcoming to the younger generation 
engaging them, listening to them, learning from them. Let's say that, that they're to blame, right? But then you have younger heads that are like, oh, I don't want to hear that trash. You're old, dude. Get out of my face. And you have that to blame. Where do you think you think it's kind of an equal blame there? Or do you think there's a imbalance like one is more at fault than the other? Uh, I think it's a I think it's an equal blame because I mean, yeah. we hear we hear on both sides. Like I remember a while ago, I don't remember what uh, like radio show it was, but uh or, or no it was the one where the the five fingers of death what was that uh, sway in the morning or whatever yeah, it yeah, is yeah 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 yep. uh i forget which mc was on there but he just like refused to rap on anything that sounds old which is kind of weird oh, that's yeah yeah uh so you know bringing it bringing that kind of energy it's just a bad look and just yeah. totally unnecessary and then of course on the flip side them old you know older dudes who kind of dislike what the newer guys are doing because they think they're you know not as good or perhaps they're just making a mockery of the art that they love so much and take very seriously, which I can understand. So it's a bit of both, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I think I think the the middle ground is much bigger than the the far sayers, you know what I'm mm. saying? But but they still exist. So since that's kind of a hot topic, you, you yeah. want to pay more attention to that, right? So right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah no, I feel that. I yo profound. What do y'all think? Give us your thoughts, please. Go ahead, profound. Man, I've ah. I don't know, man. I, I kind of feel like I feel what YGT is saying because I I'm I'm one of those MCs where if you had me on the radio and and I knew you was gonna ask me to rhyme, don't play me nothing that I that I wasn't gonna get open to. Mm. You know, like don't. Uh, I think one time I was at one of the radio stations and they played the instrumental to Wankster. And I hated that beat so much. It was just like, I just looked at him and, and wouldn't rap until he changed the beat. And it was just like, you know, like now I, if, if somebody hit me with something and it didn't sound like something that I, that would make me go there because I like the freestyle, then I probably would be turned off to it too. Um, so I don't know, man. I think it's equal. I think it's equal, you know, on both sides, but I feel, I feel, you know, I'm one of them MCs that be feeling that same way. I, you yeah. know how they go, man. If they ain't playing the right beat, man. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that happens. That happened to us, like when we be at like WNUR or like WHBK back in the day, and they ask us to freestyle, and it may be a DJ that don't know us, and they're just yeah. throwing on some like mm -hmm. what you said, like some Fifty Cent stuff. You be like, bro, come on, man. Yeah, like, I'm not <laughs> rhyming. We not rhyming think, over that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it seems yeah. to me that it seems to me in that scenario, it's like it's the DJ that's not yeah. reading the room right. You know, right? Exactly. And you know, it's up to the MC to respond in a professional manner. Exactly. You, know? you can because exactly. you can respond without nah, disrespecting it. Nah, no, bro. I was like, nah, I'm disrespecting. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> respectfully, you could tell him like change the beat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I'm not yeah, right, I'm not right. rhyming over that, bro. Yeah, yeah. This, how, this like, how Io would use a till. This how Io used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's hey, funny. We would, we would stand there and just fold our arms, dude, and look like. And I mean, I guess I mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean, he said, Yaf has said it, but I mean, I guess I'm a, one of those old heads that just like, if it's not boom bap and I can't, there's no lifeline to it, I just, I can't, you know what I mean? But I do think it's blame on both sides, though. Like, yeah. I think old head, like, just like Brother Jay said when we had him on here, we did a poor job, like, our generation or the generation before our generation did a poor job and having an open ear to the younger generation. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We kind of like shut that, you know, line of communication off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I think the, and the young heads are at fault when they like don't want to, the biggest, my biggest fault with young people, and I'm just going to be honest, the young MCs, is no homage to those that came before. You know mm. what I mean? Like, like us, I feel like we pay homage to those who came before us. But yeah. young cats, they just like, we don't want to hear nothing that y'all got to say. We doing our thing. Y'all stay over there. And I just, I, that's what bothers me about young MC. It's like no respect for those that came before. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I would say it's blame on both sides. But yeah. 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 Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yafet, do you want to jump in and respond to any of that? 
I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they, they definitely brought something up that I didn't consider because I don't, I don't make music, you know, I'm not a rapper or, or artist or anything like that. You know, I, I make beats on the, on the iPad, but that ain't, that ain't nothing serious. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a level of understanding I may not be able to relate to because I don't make the music. Yeah. Um, but just from a fan's perspective, for somebody who listens and, you know, I like, I, I would like to think I'm pretty open-minded, you know, I, I listen to a lot of stuff, uh, you know, to, to, to just totally, you know, dismiss a beat because it's not what you want. I, I think is a, is a little bit, um, you know, maybe, maybe a bit, a bit closed-minded, you know, perhaps, of course there you, get, you have like your, your comfort zones or maybe just stuff you prefer. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can always want what you want, but, uh, you know, just to, to just completely dismiss somebody, whether it be the young dismissing the old or the old dismissing the young, I just don't really think there's much of a need for that. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. Um, I'm curious to know, how did you, like, you know, when I was growing up, like, you know, you turn on the radio, wh wherever you could find hip hop, it was, you know, Biz Markey, De La Soul, Trap Call Quest. So naturally that's what I liked. You know, when you were growing up, how, what did, where did you, first of all, where did you go for music? And why do you think you gravitated towards the type of hip hop that you gravitated towards? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, growing up, I was on the TV all day, man. I was watching MTV, VH1, back when they would play music videos all the time, 106 and Park, all, like all that stuff. And I used to really love it too. Um, uh, even even on the radio too, you know, like yeah. like growing up, what was in my ear all the time? You know, Kanye was crazy big for me when, when I when I was growing up. Kid Cudi yeah. was was super popping too. Jay Z, uh, even even Nas, you know, even though uh, like the mid two thousand Nas, uh, uh, I forget the exact albums, but yeah, he was he was there too, and I'm sure a bunch of others I'm I'm uh, not naming now, but uh, you know, I was still kind of kind of in that sphere growing up of just you know what was being presented to me. That was that was what I liked and what I naturally just gravitated towards because that's what right. was presented to me right right um i would say the breaking point where i kind of just went like to the, to the side was probably like my uh freshman ish year of high school because i just got bored of rap like mm. uh, i just didn't want to listen to it no more i started listening to just other genres because this is this is around the time uh where like young money cash money was super big uh Nicki minaj lil wayne and uh and drake and, you know, this is, I guess this is like when hip hop got soft per se, like all these lovey dovey songs. <laughs> uh, and I just got bored of it. You know, I, I didn't want to hear it no more. Everything kind of sounded just a little bit too similar to me. Uh, but little did I know that this is just one layer of music. There's, mm. there's, there's this whole, like, just floodgates of other stuff. And one of my first introductions to that, I couldn't even, I couldn't even really tell you how I found out about MF Doom and Mad Lib, but Mad Villainy was that album for me. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember yeah. when I first heard it, I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't even, really, <laughs> I didn't actually like it <laughs> when I first heard it. Cause it just didn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just kept going back to it because it was so different. Yeah. And it was one of the only hip hop albums I was kind of listening to at that time. Cause I was just kind of done with like hip hop overall. I was listening to like, you know, rock music, um, electronic or whatever, but yeah. Uh, to answer your question overall, I was just bored of hip hop. That's kind of mm. what just eventually just led me to explore other things. And during that exploration, I found Mad Villainy, which kind of brought me back to hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. I, I want to pause there just for a second and give a shout out to Ian Charles on Facebook. Uh, he chimed in a little bit earlier saying, I hear that all the time from old heads uh, talking about old heads, you know, saying, oh, there's nothing to listen to. These new cats aren't any good. And he says, I end up putting them on a new music by artists they grew up with, and they are shocked to find out they still have music out there, which is an interesting point because a lot of these cats that we grew up on didn't go away. They're still making music, you know, they're still making music. So, uh, so that's dope. And Ian Charles also talked about balance. Old and new heads need to have an open mind and also understand the hip hop history, which I think, I think that's key, an open mind. Like both sides need to have an open mind to the other. Uh, for sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. And to that point, like the, the whole open minded label, I mean, you, I don't think you can fault. Well, I, I don't want to say fault. I don't want to use the word fault, but I think our generation, we was raised on a certain blueprint that you had to follow. And I say this like when it comes to like religion, right? Like 
if religion is presented in a certain way, there's rules and guidelines to yeah. that religion. And if it falls outside of that, those guidelines and those principles and those and that blueprint, then you know, like it was, it was gatekeepers to be like, no, nah, that's that's not what it is. You do it this way. And I think because we came up under that, that's why we have a certain, you know, affinity to the the style of music and the style of the sound of of beats that we choose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not only as listeners, but also as artists as well. So that's that's how I try to describe it. It's like it was we came up under the era where there's a blueprint that we had to follow those guidelines of rules, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that that's that's how I that's how I would explain it. Yeah, I feel that. And I, it seems to me that what happened was that when the major uh, corporations got involved, th- they kind of just stole that. They stole that yeah. gatekeeping power yeah. from the people, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then when you when you have a, you know, when you have four or five dudes in a city that are, you know, trying to mentor and, and they're kind of the gatekeepers in a very, you know, wise relational way. Right. And then you have, you know, a million dollar, well, maybe it was billion back there. I don't know, but you have a multi-million dollar, you know, operation come in. Right. It's hard. It's hard to compete. You right. know, it's hard to compete. And I think what happened was they just came in and kind of stole the power. And now I feel like we're kind of on the other end now. Like it all got flipped upside down because, Artists don't really need those record labels anymore. You know, with with these platforms, social media platforms, you know, it's a whole, it's a wild, wild west, really, you know. And uh, I think that's why, you know, YGT Records, your YouTube channel is so important. You know, why does this chat is so important? You know, because we're trying to to bring balance and we need a lot of us because we're up against millions of dollars all the time, you know. And so there's power in numbers, though power of numbers uh and uh ian charles also said valid points i am lost so mm-hmm. you, you got through the one that. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no doubt no doubt uh profound any thoughts from you i mean that's a valid point that you know what you made till is, is <clears throat> i think the corporations that come in it, it made me as soon as you said that it, it made me think about the commercials that i've done mm. where they wanted a rapper yeah, and they were telling me <laughs> how to rap, <laughs> it right. was, it, and 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 now you see that I, I it was do I argue about my principles as an MC, or do I take this check that I definitely need, you know, to take care of the family and everything else, yeah. and you know what now that that part of the game comes into play it's another level of income, you know, for certain individuals too. And then the music starts to shift and things like that too. Right. And then you get, you know, certain division amongst, you know, um, in that whole thing. Yeah. And I, and I was in that as well. And it's just interesting to see the old and the young, the boom bap versus the not boom bap. And the corporations that sit off to the side and collect all of the money and the revenue from it. Absolutely. That's why I applaud a lot of these uh, younger MCs that are taking that power back. I yes. think about like cats like Mac Homme. Yeah. Even if you don't like his music, like he, Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper. Yep. Yeah. They, they're coming in and rewriting the rules, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, even with the De La Soul thing, like I don't, I don't think, I think a lot of rappers from here on out are. N- they're i think that i think they're just smarter now like there's just there's there's been a light you know it's been exposed what record labels were doing you know yeah. i mean that's just crazy how how do you make something and then you don't own it exactly you know what i mean that's just absurd and yeah. it was just standard for yeah. so long and i feel like that's changing as more and more people realize like this is not this is not just this is not fair at all you know but that's been that's been historical, you know oh, what I mean? Totally. Like, yeah, you know, when you look at Motown era, yeah, well, not Motown because I think Barry Gordy was trying to do right by the artist, but I'm talking about the like the the you know, those those capitalistic organizations that was outside of our community that'd be like, yeah. hey, like what he say in third base in, in third base. Well, all you get is a pack of Newports and Puma sweats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. like, yeah. You're signing your life over. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
it's my professor calls it the 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 corporate the corporate kidnap of cap wait the capitalistic kidnapping of a hip hop culture mm. and that's basically what it is yeah, you know what i'm yeah. saying they kidnap the culture of hip hop in exchange for like and like I'm no, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm about to say this <laughs> one point, and then I'm gonna let it go because my mind be like darting, darting, darting. So <laughs> the one thing I would say is for the young dudes, the, the young guys is doing it. I'm glad you brought that up too. That's what I respect about the young dudes is their business savvy. Yeah, man. like they're not playing no games. Like when right. they coming up with these like 360 deals, or they like what well, they're getting the benefit off the deals. Now, I, my only hope. And I hope I don't sound like an old hater, old head hater, grandpa with the crutches, like you young ripper snapper. I hope I don't sound like that. But I was like, I hope now that the music lines up with their business savvy. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, you know yeah, no saying? doubt. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So yeah, but I definitely respect them for for the way they're approaching the business. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you brought that up. So so going back to the music, y'all Feth, if if someone's out there young or old and it's like i i don't know i don't really don't know what to listen to in the hip-hop world where would you take them like how, where like i get your you know obviously your youtube channel you know that's a great place to start um but is there other you know platforms out there where you would like if you want to find some dope music try out something new go here to find it that's a really good question that's kind of a hard one to answer too because uh Truthfully, I, I'm not I'm not too sure. Platforms like yours help. Yeah. Platforms like mine can help too. Yeah. Uh, but you know, a lot of a lot of this stuff now, you really gotta just put work in to find, which I don't think it really should be that way, but it is. Yeah. And obviously most people don't want to kind of put in too much effort just, just to find music they like. So that's right. why they kind of just settle for whatever is given to them. It just it makes right. sense. Yeah. But I mean, maybe the like probably the best way to really get introduced to music is to just go to shows, perhaps maybe a record store or something. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't know how to how to actually answer that like answer that question. And the, the uh, like the the answer probably is out there, and I just don't know about it. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Yeah, I think I mean I think that's part of the challenge in this new uh, social media age. Just as it, there are like tons of rappers out there. There's also tons of podcasts out there. I've I've noticed that now, you know, prepping for these Thursday night shows. There's so many podcasts out there. There's so many different programs. It's almost like we need a, you know, a list, you know, of of who like the Southern Vanguard, they do a good job of interviewing people. So there's like platforms out there. So it's like we need to accumulate a list that people know like okay, for this type of hip hop, this I can count on, you know, these these out outlets, you know, uh, a green book for boom bap hip hop. Gr- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got the book every year. I, I guess that's a good resource right there. That's a great. Yeah. Oh, I oh, you muted yourself by accident. There you go. There oh you go. yeah, there bam. That's yeah. a green book right there. That's the, bam. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Uh, Yafeth, uh, a question outside of music, man. When you're not listening to music. Or working, man. What do you like to do? What? What? How do you like to enjoy yourself? Well, uh, this might sound kind of boring, but I, I do like working out. Actually, actually, it's pretty fun for me. It has good. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good habit to have. I just like yeah. how it, it makes me feel. But, but no, man. My my interests are like everywhere. You know, I yeah. uh, this camera that I'm using right here. Like, I never realized how fun the street photography was until I actually mm. did it, and I actually really enjoy it. It's, it's a ton of fun. You meet a lot of great people doing it. You know what I'm saying? People automatically assume you're like a, a, a crazy good photographer who makes like crazy money from just carrying this thing around. So right. easy conversation. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, man, I'm just I'm like outside of the music. I mean, it's it's uh, it's just about life, really, for me. You know, I kind of like exploring stuff. You know, even recently, I moved from from the Bay Area over to Dallas just because mm. I wanted something new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So outside of the music, you know, it's just about uh, for me, really, just the experiences. I'm just trying to get 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 into wherever they may be. Some some of them, I just get, I just go with it as as they come along. Some of them are planned. So kind of kind of a vague answer, but that's really really uh, like just the truth for me. It's all good. And you said you like going to concerts, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I haven't gone to many because of COVID now. But right. back then, yeah, I was going to a ton. Uh, the Bay Area, man, super popping, bro. I used yeah. to love Oakland. I was always in Oakland. San Francisco's yeah, yep. cool too. 
uh, I used to love Oakland more than uh, I, I used to kind of dislike San Francisco for a while, but <laughs> but either way, that they're both dope. Oakland was definitely the spot. Tons of great shows. Yeah. The last the last show I saw before all this madness happened was in San Francisco. I saw um well I didn't see Jay Dilla, but it was Dilla Day, and oh. uh, DJ Shortcut and uh, J Rock were there, and that was that was a great great show, man. Dope. Amazing energy in there. People were on point. Music was on point. It was beautiful. We know we're hip hop heads, so we always have to do lists. Do you have a top three or five uh, performances oh, of all time? Uh, I hate questions like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think me, they're so fun, man. They're so fun. They're fun, but it's like I feel I feel bad because I'm like I almost feel as though I'm disrespecting the people who I did see by not mentioning them. Right, right. You're gonna leave somebody out. I know, I know. But oh, if you oh. get, I mean, just if you think back to the performance you've seen were there any performances that really stuck out like oh man this definitely this group was super dope um well i'll say i'll say i'll, I'll start off with the best show I've, I've ever seen and it was just coincidentally the cheapest show i've mm-hmm. ever went to it was five bucks and i saw open mike eagle mm. in san francisco i think this is in 2016 or something there was like 25 30 people there and it was amazing he was there dibiase was there if you guys are familiar and uh, another gentleman who I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting, but that was that was a really uh, incredible show, man. He's just 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 like the presence and just yeah, what he did on there was really dope. Um, also, Jay Electronica, I saw him in Oakland. That was wild, man. He's really? he's a he's a beast, bro. <laughs> yeah, especially in person, he's really nice. That was that was pretty crazy. He had this one segment. I forget the story, but I think he told a story about how he saw most deaf or, or something. And then most deaf had this like segment where he let somebody or two people or, or whoever in the crowd come up to rap. And then he did that for us. Now I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go up. I can't rap, but, <laughs> but there was one dude and this one lady, they went up and they were rapping, bro. And it was, it was good. It was just, it was just really cool how he did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then towards the end to kind of wrap it up, he like hopped, how like hopped in the crowd, you know, just kind of bring us all together. It was just really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, probably the last one I would say was uh, when I saw um, Shabazz Palaces in mm. uh, Oakland at, at the Fox Theater. That was really, really nice. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, uh, well, Profound and Io Moss, they're, they're live <laughs> performers and they get down. What do you guys what, what, t- tell, tell us who are uh, a few performances you've seen that were just phenomenal? You want to go oh, first, man. bro? Or you want me to go? You go, I so many, bro. Yeah, you, <laughs> Just we, pick we a couple. Rock together uh, so many I'll pick times. a couple. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> one of the ones, I'll say the best one for last that was with me and Pro. Well, I'll start with that one. It was it was a KRS One show. Mm. I forget where we were, but for some reason, me, Profound, and a few other people that we know in Chicago was able to be on stage with KRS One, oh, throwing dope. out tennis balls that had KRS One <laughs> on the tennis balls. And we were just throwing them out. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, Karis one doing the same thing, letting cats get down. Mm-hmm. And Profound murdered it. And I remember Karis one going directly to Profound yeah. and chopping it up. To, and it made me feel good that somebody from Chicago was getting props. Yeah, that's dope. And then it was a show where I went to go see The Roots for the first time. And it was at the House of Blues in Chicago. And they started Quest Love. They had like three layers at the House of Blues. And you see this big afro in the shadows playing a cowbell. He played the cowbell. He it was going pink, 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 pink. He walked all the way down. You could hear the cowbell <laughs> all over the all over the auditorium. And then when he came out on the stage, black thought. Scratch, all of them had different sounding cowbells playing different type of rhythms. <laughs> and then that's how they kicked off the show. I thought that was crazy. I was like, wow, mm. this is crazy. And then the other show that I saw was with Karis, with uh, Most Deaf at, uh, I forget the name of the, at the venue in Chicago. And Most Deaf murdered it, man. Like I remember Talib going out first mm. with my acapellas and they booed. Talib Kweli off the stage, just booed him, bro. Oh, snap. And then most just came out of nowhere and did bat, 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 bat. A, B, boy, rock the world. And the crowd went nuts, Joe. Like, he murdered it. Killed his set, went to McDonald's, came back on Common Set and did a freestyle about (laughs) going to McDonald's down the street. (laughs) 
He said, I seen a shorty with the light eyes. She said it's 99 cent for the super size. And the crowd went nuts, <laughs> bro. Like, that was like one of the best shows I ever seen in my life, man. Like, my, that was my first time seeing most. Mm. And I was like, man, this dude is going to save hip hop, Joe. Yeah. Like, this dude, he was so charismatic on stage. Like, yeah. you could tell that he was like super com- comfortable on stage, bro. It was right. like, um, that was like one of the most amazing shows I've ever seen, bro. That's dope. Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> Profan? Uh man, I had to I had to co-sign Iowa on, on KRS. I mean, I've seen KRS a few times in Chicago, and just by chance, he's pulled me up on the stage a couple of times, you know, and 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 it's opened the mic up and Definitely, Chris, and the energy that he brings is absolutely incredible, man. <clears throat> absolutely incredible. Um, Chris, I'll say, man, I seen Pharaoh at the Shrine in Chicago. Pharaoh Monch uh, was there. I think Ace was there that night and Jean Grey. And Pharaoh Monch, man, was there with the, with the with the band, man, and he was going absolutely bananas. And I hadn't seen him with the band before, and it was just a whole nother level of Pharaoh Monch as mm. not just an MC but as a performer. Yeah, and it was just inc- it was just incredible to see, man, incredible to see. And the last thing, the Up and Smoke tour. I was mm. at the up, I was at one of the Up and Smoke tours at, at the Allstate Arena man and i've never seen anything like that yeah and that was at the height when that was going down so to see dre and, and man it was absolutely yeah. phenomenal that's dope yeah Feth, are you a fan of uh common yeah common's Any... dope man i love uh resurrection a lot oh dope <laughs> dope what about um b yeah B. yeah b uh b's pretty dope too common was uh another dude who i kind of grew up listening to i, I used yeah. to watch all of his, his uh music videos and everything but yeah common yeah. common's great he came to cincinnati right after b came out so i don't know a month or two after b came out and i was in there i don't know how i got in there i was in the front right in the front so I could just look up. He was, and it was a small venue. I love that. It was a small, it wasn't one of these big, you know, stadiums. It was a small venue. And I what just captivated me was the fact that like he never stopped moving like the entire time. I mean, you know, he'd stop and talk a little bit, but he just moved and his voice was like crystal clear, like it was on, on the album the entire time. And just this energy that he brought was just so magnetic man i just was like man this is insane this is he's so good like i didn't want to stop watching you know i was just so drawn in and uh you know of course he did stuff with the crowd and engaged but it was it was just his energy that i just you know it was just so magnetizing so that was one for me that uh, was really really cool you know whose voice like that's another thing like when you go see a live show the, it was it, like large professor mm-hmm. sounds exactly like you do on a CD live, mm-hmm. bro. Like yeah. I was just like amazed by how clear yeah, yeah. his vocals. I'm like, man, this dude sound just right, <laughs> like right. the CD. Like I was just like amazed by yeah. that, man. Like when you can do that, like you said, with Common, like how like, you know, how he moved around, but you could still hear everything. You know what I mean? Crystal clear, like. Yeah, that's 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 a dope performer right there, man. Yeah. So I do I have a question about ageism in hip hop. And I was a little reluctant to ask the question because well, we'll we'll get into it. I'll see what you all think. I've seen people post this before about how when you're a certain age, you need you don't you don't need to be rapping anymore. At a certain age, you need to stop rapping. What do y'all think about that? It's a, young man, it's a young man's sport, right, Yafef? You, yeah, you can't rap when you're 50, Y'all can't keep right? up, man. Y'all got to stop, man. Just <laughs> sit down. But no, 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 no. Like, um, that's, that's, that's crazy to say that. I don't know who said that, but they need to stop. Like, yeah. um, even uh, Nas is King's disease, right? Like, we're, we're hearing older Nas talk. Like, I like hearing, you know, uh, MCs, especially older MCs, talk about something that I probably can't even understand yet. I'm not there, like, in life yet. Uh, even uh, Jay Z's four forty four, he talking like a whole bunch of grown man stuff in there. Yeah, you know, it's um, 
there's 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 so much ignorance in, in that statement i kind of yeah. almost don't do, like don't want to answer it because it's, it's just stupid right uh but no nah, like there's if, if, if you can make good music and you can you know deliver your craft or, or however you want to present it yep. and spit some knowledge and some game like why would you not want to hear that right and i mean i'm sorry I'll just, i'm gonna chime in and it's not even about making good music like if if you if you want to create art create art you know you want to rap rap like yeah don't let anything stop you from expressing yourself you know age shouldn't say anyway profound i own it brother this is i'm i'm glad you asked that question me too because, me too because do you hear this yeah yeah I, i'm i'm i so i was in a <clears throat> i was privileged to be in a conversation with uh, both of my mentors, Doug and No ID. Yes, this, this came up, and Doug and No ID had said to me, "Um, because I asked that question, I was like, why is it that like you know, like it's an issue, you know, after you know, I was in my thirties or whatever, after you know, thirty, like people like, oh man, you getting old, you still doing this? I was like, when I first wanted to rhyme, I never wanted to stop, or I never saw an end to it, yeah. like." Oh, I'm gonna get 30 and I'm not, I'm not gonna rap no more. Right. And he was, and both him and Doug brought up jazz and they brought up the jazz musicians. Mm. And they were both like, man, you see the jazz community, the jazz musicians plug play well into their 80s and 90s. If yeah, man. Can. Right. <clears throat> it's like, so why wouldn't Facts. you, why wouldn't you, if this is what you do, if you paint, you paint. Like you said, it's an art. Like it's what this is what you do. But yeah, I've I've seen I've seen that come up a lot. But you know, yep. when you throw them darts back at people that be talking like that, you know, they don't get to question your age much longer. Yeah. I you know how that go. You, you <laughs> can settle it on the mic if y'all want to keep talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, I'll quote KRS one. What he say? I'll be doing this till I'm mother effing sixty. Yeah, you know what he said. So I mean, <laughs> madism. Yeah, you know what I mean, like me and my brother Ron. Uh, shout out my brother Ron, Detroit. What's the irony? We had this conversation all the time. Um, I don't want to say my age, but I'm pushing. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm at a certain I'm at a certain age right now. I don't look at. I tell people I'm an old young dude. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, uh, Ron, me and Ron had this discussion before, and we were saying that the balance there there needs to be all the MCs that's still doing it yeah. because we could show a different side of. Because I that that's the one thing that bothers me when you have older MCs trying to act young. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're trying to say like they still act a certain way, dress a certain way, and I don't think it's anything wrong with talking about you being married. Yeah, you talk about raising your children, right? You talking about you know what I mean being educated. Um, I don't think it's a problem with that, and I think we need more of that. Um, yeah, and I think we need collaborations between young people, young MCs, and older MCs. Well, we could bridge that gap and ha- kind of like have a conversation with each other about that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like working with like my shout out my guy Quan, who's working with younger MCs in Detroit in an organization in a uh, organization called Lyricist Society. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, where he's right now they're working on a project where they're putting young hit the young his students that's rhyming with older people that's rhyming. Like right. I did a joint with them. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Dope. That's super so dope. that's that's the type of stuff that needs to be taking place. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But unfortunately it won't get light, but as long as we're doing the work, it don't yeah. it don't need to get the light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And that's you know, one of you said it's just it's just a dumb statement. And uh but 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 people do say it, and you know, Ian Charles chimed in again and said, you know, any genre of music. We have artists playing decades old music. You know, you talked about it in jazz. Hip hop music is the only genre that actively chastises old MCs. Now, I don't know if it's fully, I don't know how big, like how many people out there are actually saying this. You know, a lot of times, sometimes those those uh, minority voices get amplified on, you know, Facebook and social media and stuff like that. So it may be a very sh- small group of people saying it, but the voice is just amplified maybe. But I, I mean, it also makes me think like, well, you know, what do you, what are you doing? Like, who are you making this music for? Is it all for other people or is it, you know, something that is, you know, 
an expression of yourself? Is it something that you, you know, need to put out in this world, you know? And if that's the case, you know, put it out. Like I remember people saying that Michael Jordan shouldn't have come back. And I would always fight back be like, dude's a grown man. If he, if he's able to run up and down the court, run up and down the court. And people were like, oh, it's going to taint his reputation and taint his legacy. I was like, no, it's not. You know, ain't nobody sitting around today talking about Michael Jordan wasn't that good because he came back where, you know, for this team and was whack or whatever. Like nobody talks about that. They talk about the the three in a row and then the three in a row and how dope exactly. he is better than LeBron, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, right. let the man, yeah, if you can play, play. If you can make music, make it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing, one thing too. Uh, yeah. Like, are you guys familiar with who uh, Godfather Don is? Yeah. Right. So he's, you know, he's up there in age too. He's he's not he's not a super old man, but either way, uh, I actually didn't know who he was until a couple of years ago. He released something new. I, I forget the uh, the album title, but one of my boys back in Cali, he put me on to him. And when I heard him, you know, I didn't know who he, who, uh, who he was. But once I heard him, I'm, I'm like, man, this dude is really like on point. Yeah. And then I found out who he was and, you know, he's a bit older. And this is this conversation is kind of bringing me back to that, because if you could if you would present somebody like him to somebody else who didn't know and kind of felt like how, uh, you know, old people can't rap or whatever, they'd probably be shocked and just feel stupid because it's, you know, if you got the skill, you, like you have the skill, like this whole conversation is just so ridiculous, you know. But yeah. um, but yeah, that I just really re- like reminded me of uh, Godfather Don. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, and there's a lot of artists around that are super dope, and you know, like I always said, pushing, <laughs> pushing a certain. And Karis, you know, he's probably getting close to sixty. Man, he's probably I, he is sixty, bro. He is sixty. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I know Daylight's day like fifty up there. Yeah, yeah, they gotta be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and hey, every bro, time I hear them rhyme, they you they know, be killing it. They sound dope. So yeah, man, for yeah. real. Yeah. Uh hey, Yafeth. Um, how can people uh find your channel? What, what do they have to search for on YouTube? On YouTube, if you want to find my channel, you can type in YGT Records. Uh, there's a couple other channels with that name. Just look for the one with, with the white logo, you'll see it's me. But yeah, that's where I'm at on on uh, YouTube, even Instagram, Twitter, it's all the same thing. YGT Records. YGT Records. Yeah. Dope, dope. Do you have any um, interviews coming up uh, soon that you can tell us about? Uh, interviews? No, nah, that'd be pretty not cool. Inter- sorry, not interviews. Yeah, you should do interviews, too. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be I, cool. I meant reviews. <laughs> reviews. Do you have any reviews coming up? Reviews? Yeah, I got I got a couple. I want to, I still got to get that uh, that Bo Jackson done, the Alchemist, both oh, the James yeah. one. That, yes, one yes. that one's nice. Uh, also, the the Blue the blue Mickey Facts and Knots. I was really happy to see uh, Blue yeah. and Knots back together. Honestly, I'm happy to see anything Knots. Knots is a magic. Yes. Uh, I love Knots. Yeah. It's it's, it's, it's kind of crazy to see, like, how much he's done. Because he's worked with some really big names. But yeah, man. he's still, like, mega underground. It's kind of weird. I don't know. It, yeah. Totally weird. But, yeah. His bass lines is always man. Always banging and no, and I don't know how he does it, but he makes those drums. They just kind of stutter, they're choppy, but it's, it's he's a madman, so bro. Well, yeah, man. <laughs> he's one of my favorite. I, I he's probably in my top five favorite per, per, personal favorite producers. Dope, dope. Um, cool. So everyone tuning in, please check out this man. Go to YG YGT Records on YouTube and all social media. Follow him, check out the videos. Uh, Cause it's super, super dope. Um, anything else you want to tell the people before we have some fun with this one word challenge? I just appreciate y'all for coming through or for inviting me through, you know, it's always fun yeah. to have these hip hop conversations, especially with the old and the young, I don't, I don't mean to call y'all old, but the older and the, <laughs> what are you talking and about, the, man? And I'm the young, offended. appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, man, Let course, me take man. my teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but for real though, man, uh, I used to always forget my lines. Uh, on stage and you know i i don't know why i just i would forget my lines man and forget my rhymes and um i'm gonna be it's gonna be fun going back at when i get back on the stage and rhyme and get older because then people be like oh he's just old he forgot his rhymes but <laughs> little do they know I, i've always had a, <laughs> i always forget one or two but anyway i get i guess i just get so excited all right the one word challenge i got it profound here um here we go we got a little uh, bumper intro for this and uh, we're going to ask you a question, Yafef, to see if you accept the challenge here. Okay, so here we go. Okay, party people in the house. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. 
In this portion of the show, we'll show an assortment of hip hop albums and challenge our guests to describe them in one word or less. Do you accept the challenge? All right, there it is. Do you accept the challenge, Yafef? I accept. Let's see. Oh, he accepts what you got the me. challenge. All right. Ooh. The first album, you have to describe it in one word. First word that comes to your mind. First joint is kindness for weakness. True. Like homeboy Sandman. What's that? Creative. Creative. Yo, I feel that. All right. Next one Illmatic by Nas. Classic. Classic. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Next one is Brick Body Kids Still Daydream. I open Fant- Mike Eagle. Fantasy. Fantasy. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Here's the infamous Mob Deep by, uh, or Hell on Earth by the infamous, infamous Mob Deep. Tough. Tough. Mm. You like this one better than their first one? Well, that's, that's my favorite, actually. That's this my favorite the, one. Yeah, this is a good one. That's a good one. All right. I forget the name of this one. And it's not on the, the title, but it's got a funky album cover. It's a naked doll baby. Oh, man. <laughs> Underrated. <laughs> Under, yes. <laughs> Can you talk about this album? Johnson and Johnson, Blue Johnson and Mainframe. Yes. That yes. that was that's one of my favorite blue albums. Period. I uh, I really love just how Mainframe put it all together. There's one song, uh, the only way, the way Blue was rapping on it over that sample. Like if you, if you heard it, then then you know. But if, if you haven't, definitely check out the the only way. I love how Blue was rhyming on that. How he's just dancing with the sample. It was it was really dope, man. The whole album is fantastic. All right, this this one, you know, people may not say is hip hop, but it definitely is hip hop adjacent. Um, this is Anderson Pack, No Worries, and Knowledge. Player, player, I feel that. Okay, Mad Villainy by Mad Villain. WTF? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Does that? That's three letters. Does, does that, that count? count? I don't know. We've never had that before. This is the first. I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give, wait. Hold on. Was it? Yeah, yeah. They they uh they 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 said yes. We can give you that. All right. Uh, behold a wait wait no. Behold, behold a dark a dark horse, horse by Rock Marciano. Interesting. Interesting. What's your favorite Rock Marciano album? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> if I can only I pick one. Fan. If I can only pick one, it's, it's, it's tough, but I'll pick Marsburg. Mart. Boom. There it is. Oh, there it Mars- is. I love that one. Um, all right. We got one, two more here. Nothing less by N1 and Phonics. Uh hip hop. Is that is that one word? Can I can I say that? Yeah, you can say hip hop, sure. Because yeah. I definitely feel like that when I when I listen to it. Yeah, you can you can get uh album of the year uh contender, you think? uh it's up there it's up there there? okay all right last one this this one gets brought up a lot no matter the age of the guest no matter where they're from i think this is the out this is one of the albums when i ask our guests like what are some of your favorite albums of all time this is one of the albums that gets uh you know one of the biggest responses this is to pimp a butterfly by kendrick lamar masterful masterful what do you like about this album yeah I, I love it's like it, ha, it has a it's gonna sound goofy for, for, for me to say artsy but kendrick kendrick just like sounds crazy emotional on here just really mm. like the fact of how like of like how black this album is too is also why i love yeah. it he's talking about a lot of stuff on here and just i don't know man just like uh you know you know you know how some pieces of art whether it be music or movies or whatever it can really move you yeah, yeah. Uh, even to the point of tears, you know, wh- wh- like whatever it may be, that album really, like, really did that for me. Yeah, that's dope, so, man. That's dope. I don't know what it is, man. It just seems like that album captures everyone. So, well, not everyone, uh, but most, most, most people that come on here. I remember there was one MC that was like, "Oh, the album's uh, overrated." I was like, "All right, that's cool. I respect that." Um, cool, fellas. Anything else before we we go into our shout outs tonight? Anything else you want to say? In the room, anybody? No, we good. You good? good? Okay. Yeah, All right. Baby. I, hey, but, I well, I subscribe to the channel already. That, oh, good. Say that. good. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Make sure you subscribe to this man's channel. It's super yep. dope. And you know, the question I asked earlier about like, you know, where can we go to find out about new hip hop coming out? Dope hip hop. This man will will lead you in the right way. So go to his channel, YGT Records, 
and follow those reviews and he'll put you onto a lot of dope music. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if you've been here to the very end of uh, the boom bap chats, but we always do. We always close out with shout outs uh, and Yafeth, I'll let you go last. So you'll have the last word, uh, but uh, we'll swing it over. Profound profound. Who are you shouting out tonight? You know, the pro kids in the building, <clears throat> excuse me, Amir <laughs> Zach here, <laughs> uh, Rosalina, Daima, Ariel, and uh, Elijah, who just came home from football practice, eagerly waiting to tell me how he ran people over today. And they was running the running back drill. So I'll be looking forward to hearing about that in a few minutes. Nice, nice. And then, of course, my brothers, the Boom Bat Chat, of course, the crew, Io Till, um, Man, and YGT. I really love your energy, my brother. Please continue what you're doing. I've already subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be at you on IG. Who knows? We might, you know, do an IG live or something. You know what I'm saying? And, and put something together, man. I'm yeah. sure we can make that happen, too. Totally. Totally. Uh, I.O. Hey, I want to shout out the Boom Bap Chat brothers. You know, Brother Till, Brother Pro. Um, just want to shout out YGT Records, man. Thanks for coming through for this conversation. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I concur with everything that Profound said. Love your energy, mm. love your humility, and your insight on the music that we love so much, that we all love so much, regardless of our age. So much respect to you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Chicago, my people in Chicago. Shout out to Detroit, my family in Detroit. And um yeah, and um where I'm at right now, Toronto, I haven't really built a lot of community here, but I'm working on it. So yeah. shout out to the people in Toronto. So yeah, man, no doubt. Word up, word up. Yeah, shout out to you, IO, of course. Shout out Profound, shout out Yafeth. Uh, shout out to just all these artists that we love, man, to open Mike Eagle and Kendrick Lamar, A1 and Phonics, whether you're selling, you know crazy amounts of albums or you got a you know smaller knit you know uh, following online whatever the case is man you're making dope music and that's why uh that's why we're here you know to cover and part of why we're here is to cover you all so shout out to all everyone out there making dope dope hip-hop music rock beasties thought provoker the list goes on and on so shout out all y'all shout out to the diamond district why you odyssey and uptown xo who will be with us next thursday night so uh shout out to them and uh last but not least shout out to you yafeth and everything that you're doing man i echo what the brothers were saying tonight that just really appreciate what you're doing and uh, it's it's necessary it's needed and hopefully we can help you uh get you know many 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 more followers on your youtube channel uh and to help you get the music out to more and more people so really appreciate you your spirit and for being with us and sharing your time with us tonight and with that i'll give you the final shout outs appreciate it man shout outs to you till profound i am Oz. appreciate y'all it was really good talking to y'all shout outs to the boom bap chat uh, shout outs to the work that you guys all put into bringing us all together for our favorite genre of music. Shout outs to the people who support people like MC Till Profound, Iomas, and also, of course, shout outs to people with open minds who can listen to music for what it is and not what you want. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I got for y'all. Peace. Cool, cool. And on that note, we all say peace, 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 peace. peace. peace.